Buying server parts, or honestly any PC component, is almost always a gamble from AliExpress. This time I spent hundreds of dollars on this new home server and in today's video we're going to talk about whether it even worked out or not and reasons of why I needed this new home server. Let's get into it. Today's video is sponsored by Pulseway, which can be a critical piece to your home server and networking solution. More about them later in the video. All right, so just to break it down for you, or in case if you just wanna skip around this video, the first part of this video is simply talking about the reasons why I needed a home server upgrade and reasons why you may wanna build one for yourself. This isn't going to be obnoxiously technical or anything, more so just an overview. And after that, we'll talk about how you can take your home network to the next level with some proper remote monitoring and management. And then finally, we'll talk about this hardware that we're looking at now and whether or not buying from AliExpress this time was worth it. If you missed it years ago, I actually tried to build an entire gaming PC from AliExpress, like every single part, and it didn't work out so well, so that's why I'm hesitant to try this again. But yeah, before that though, let's talk about the reasons of why I had to build this new home server. And this is always the most fun part of these videos because there's so many things to do with the home server. But the very first reason for my upgrade is that I seriously just needed an upgrade. I do already have a Ryzen 7 1700X server running in my home server rack that has 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and one terabyte of storage. But over the last couple of years, that has been getting filled up. And I'm at the point now where I need more CPU cores, RAM and storage, basically everything that you put into a server build. Whenever I'm wanting to spin up a new virtual machine, I legit have to power off one that's currently running. So I have enough RAM and that obviously isn't ideal. I mostly blame the ZTT community Minecraft server, by the way, with all the plugins and mod packs and everything that we've been experimenting with, RAM usage right now is through the roof. If you aren't aware, you can head on over to zaxtechdrift.com slash Minecraft to get all the latest information on how you can join us. We have the server IP, plugin information, latest updates, and everything like that. We'd love for you to join us. But yeah, so for RAM, the first thing that I needed to do was ensure that I got a system that allowed for 128 gigabytes of RAM, so that was pretty easy. And I also needed to add bigger SSDs to my ZFS pool, which hosts all the virtual machines, and Team Group hooked me up with that, but more about the hardware later on in the video. Along with just the virtual machines, these ZFS snapshots take up up a ton of storage as well. And if you aren't up to speed on snapshots, these are basically the best things since sliced bread. Basically, you can take a snapshot of a virtual machine in its exact point of time, and then you can roll back to that point in time whenever you want to. This is super handy whenever you're doing like a critical OS update or maybe doing some maintenance on the server or whatnot, you take a snapshot before you do those config changes. And then if you mess anything up, you can just roll back in time like it's never happened before. And this has saved my butt so many times. But now the other main reason for me upgrading the server outside of the RAM and storage needs is that I simply wanted a second node in my Proxmox cluster as this provides a whole new level of flexibility, reliability, and uptime. And whenever you're hosting a bunch of services or servers like Plex and a Minecraft server, whenever you wanna do something on the host machine, such as just reboot it or like perform some maintenance on it or whatnot, you have to essentially take all of those services down whenever you do reboot the server. And this not only decreases your uptime for those services, but you're also risking something goes wrong because servers don't really like to be rebooted too often. With a second virtual machine node like in my Proxmox cluster, this gives me the ability to transfer over my VMs from one host to another, and they can actually live migrate, which means they'll stay online and operating, and this is super clutch. This means that if I wanna completely shut down my original 1700X server because I wanna install some security updates, pull it out of my rack to clean it, and maybe make an upgrade or two, I can first move everything from this server over to my new one, and no one from the Minecraft server will even notice, and my wife will be happy that Plex is always up and running. And aside from Plex, and Minecraft, I'm still running a ton of other virtual machines and services, but they aren't as high priority, but they're still important to me and my self-hosting hobby needs. I'm also using Pulseway to monitor all of these, which we'll talk about soon. From the Pulseway dashboard, I can easily see that all of my services and hardware are up and running, and I can even get quick snapshots of current temperature, storage space, RAM usage, and things like that. So for my VMs, first up, we have a Plex backup server, which sounds obnoxious to say, but it's actually pretty useful. I said this in my last home server video, but once you start having people rely on your Plex server, you're going to want to keep it running at all times and a backup virtual machine can definitely help you out with that. I also have a Windows 10 torrenting server that I use for exactly what you'd expect, but this way I'm not downloading anything on a critical computer or anything for security reasons. I also run Ombi, which is a pretty cool web server that allows you to create accounts for people and then they can go in and request different TV shows and movies that they want on the Plex server and it's a great way to keep track of all of that. I also run a full Bitcoin node on my home server and this isn't the same thing as mining 
this is basically just processing all of the Bitcoin transactions that are going on around this world. And if you didn't know, this planet only has like 15,000 Bitcoin nodes, which isn't that much. And I actually take a lot of pride knowing that I'm running one of them, especially during these really tough times where people are actually using cryptocurrency to help other countries in need. We also have Pi-hole, which most people have probably heard of before. It simply blocks ads on every device in your house. I also have Docker running on an Ubuntu VM so I can experiment with both Docker itself as well as different self-hosting services. I'm also running AMP, which is a Linux-based platform that allows for game server hosting pretty much any type of hostable game, such as Minecraft, Ark Survival Evolved, Rust, CSGO, and so much more. Definitely wanna add some more ZTD community service, by the way. Comment down below if you have any suggestions. And finally, the other important thing for me is just having the room to experiment with other Linux operating systems or other self-hostable services. Just being able to quickly fire up a new virtual machine and not having to worry about RAM or anything is super convenient. But now that we've talked about all the reasons why I needed a new home server, my home network and server infrastructure is a little bit complex, as you can probably tell. And I didn't even mention the Synology devices or all the Ubiquiti gear, but something like PulseWeight can come in super clutch for helping me monitor monitor all of this infrastructure as well as managing and controlling it. Pulseway is a remote monitoring and management solution that allows you to install it on every type of device like my Linux virtual machines, Windows desktops, and even Raspberry Pis. And then you can completely monitor and control those devices from the Pulseway dashboard. From here, you can do all sorts of things such as building super clean and sexy network diagrams so you can get a snapshot on how everything is looking. You can create all sorts of automations and auto remediation tasks. You can keep every type of device updated with their patch management tools, and you can also integrate it with other IT tools such as Slack, Autotask, Webroot, and some others. I personally like Pulseway because it allows me to remote desktop into any of the computers that I have that client running on, and then I can control it basically like I'm sitting right in front of it, and I can also use my phone to do that using the Pulseway app. If this sounds a bit complicated, they 100% got you covered during the onboarding process because they have written guides and video tutorials for pretty much everything you can do on the platform, which will get you up to speed efficiently. Pulseway isn't just for home network works like mine either. Pulseway is a great tool if you're running a proper MSP business or if you're just finding yourself doing a lot of IT work for friends or family. Pulseway is hooking all of you up with an entire year for free if you click that first link down in the description. And once again, big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. But now the third and final part of this video is to talk about the hardware and whether or not this AliExpress build was successful or not. Just like always, everything we're talking about is of course linked down in the description. But real quickly, I want to explain the pricing that you should consider when putting together a home server like this. In today's market, most of your server server budget should go into core count, RAM, and storage as you don't need to invest a ton of money into core speeds and super expensive CPUs and definitely not GPUs unless you're actually using the server for something that can benefit from it. For everything that I listed that I'm doing with this server, core count, RAM, and storage is basically all that I really need and this allows me to cheap out and spend a little bit less money on the other components of the build. One thing that I didn't cheap out on though were these SSDs and Team Group had me cover with these T-Force Vulcan G 2 terabyte drives and I'm super excited about this. Not only are these huge SSDs supporting the much faster than hard drive speeds of 550 over 500 megabytes per second, but having two of them allows me to throw them in a mirrored ZFS pool for some serious redundancy. This is essentially like a RAID 1, but with ZFS features like snapshotting, which I talked about earlier. And if one of these drives gets corrupt, I won't lose any data. And that's exactly what I recommend doing if you're building a server with semi-important VMs on them. These drives also have SLC caching and built-in error correction. And big thanks again to Team Grid for sending them out. And also before for the AliExpress parts, we have the power supply and Deepcool actually sent out this monster 1000 watt unit. This is the PQ1000M, which is 80 plus gold certified and fully modular. And yes, this is absolutely way more power than I need for a server like this, but I wanted to splurge a little bit and use a cool product to showcase what you could do with a build like this. This power supply would allow me to add some GPUs in here or obviously some much more power hungry parts. And with this fully modular design, I don't have to waste space in our super tiny 2U Rosewell server chassis on extra cable that I'm not using. And then finally, also inside the server, we of course have what I call the big three, the CPU, motherboard, and RAM. And all three of these parts, I did end up buying from AliExpress and it actually ended up costing less than 500 bucks, which was pretty good. For the CPU, this is the Intel Xeon E5 2670V3, which although is only running up to 3.1 gigahertz, like I said, that's not nearly as important as the 12 cores and 24 threads, which is what I was the most interested in. 12 cores and 24 threads for only 50 bucks is absolutely crazy. And I love that you can also pair 
pair it with an equally cheap motherboard and get away with it, such as this Killzeri X99 board. There's honestly not many features that I was targeting here. I just needed to make sure that it was micro ATX to fit our case, it needed four RAM slots, and I also wanted that NVMe slot for our main boot SSD. I'm just using a Crucial P5, by the way. The only purpose this drive serves is to host the Proxmox operating system. Like I said, all of the VMs are stored on the mirrored ZFS RAID. And finally for RAM, since this board does allow four sticks, I bought four of these 32 gigabyte Killzeri DDR4 sticks that are clocked at 2133 megahertz and are ECC and registered. This isn't super important out in the PC gaming world, but it's a pretty common config for server builds like this. All in all, this is what the entire parts list is looking like. We don't have to dive into the specifics of the lesser important parts for this video, but I am happy to report that honestly, all of this is up and running super smoothly, and I don't mean to jinx it, but I had exactly zero issues with these AliExpress parts, and they are simply just working as intended. I did have some problems with AliExpress in the past before, which is why I wanted to make this video, but at the end of the day, you just have to remember that they're just a marketplace, and you just need to do your research ahead of time before buying, make sure that the seller has a lot of high star reviews, and make sure that you're actually buying legit products that will work well together, and if you do that, you should be perfectly fine. As long as it doesn't get damaged in its monthly long voyage from China to wherever you're at, that is. This server build has been a huge success for me, and I'm actually really happy with it. For those of you that are tuned into my home server videos and my own personal projects, first up, thank you. But also for those of you that want to know what I'm up to next, I'm actually going to be converting that mini PC that I featured in a video a few weeks ago into a third Proxmox node, and that should be a lot of fun as well. That was honestly the main reason I asked Corsair to hook me up with that two terabyte NVMe drive and 64 gigabytes of RAM. That'll be perfect for adding some more resources to the Proxmox cluster, and I may make another video on how that goes. Definitely be sure to let me know in the comment section if you want to see more videos like this. And if you didn't already see my recent home server video, I would recommend you check that out because in that video, I actually talk about more of the basics of the home server and why you should build one for yourself and also how to do one for free. But just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.